Now, Anthony Joshua was at the Bivol Jose Ramirez fight in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates, and he was asked a lot of questions, you know, about Deontay Wilder, and it seems that a fight may be pending between Joshua and Wilder in 2023. Now, before I talk about, you know, my thoughts on a fight between these two, I'm just going to talk about, you know, my stance on Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder. Now, I like both fighters. I know some people will be very confused, thinking, how can you like Joshua and like Deontay Wilder? No, people like that actually exist. I like Deontay Wilder because he's an extremely exciting fighter, and he always goes for the KO. And similarly to Joshua, even though Joshua has been very hesitant, very gun-shy in his recent fights, he's constantly fought top-level opposition. And when Joshua is at his blistering best, he's a very, very exciting fighter to watch. So yes, I am a fan of both Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua. And this is relevant because a lot of my viewers, I can see essentially where my viewers and subscribers come from. And a lot of them come from either pro Joshua channels or pro Wilder channels. So essentially a big portion of my viewers are Joshua or Wilder fans. So yeah, I'm objective and if I see Wilder or Joshua do something that I think is wrong, I'll call them out for it. And if they do something I like or something that I think is right, I'll praise them for it. Okay, that was a side tangent. Now, Anthony Joshua, as I mentioned just prior, he's very gun shy. I don't believe he's recovered from his knockout loss to Andy Ruiz in the first fight. You know, if you just look at the Kubrat Pulev fight, Joshua could have got Kubrat Pulev out earlier, but he was hesitant. He thought, hmm, maybe I shouldn't just go in. And then he left Kubrat Pulev in there for two, three, four more rounds than he should have been. You know, Joshua should have took Pulev out very early on, but he was a bit reserved and then he up the ante and then finally got Pulev out of there. In the Usyk first match, Joshua was boxing. Joshua seemed to have this inability to make adjustments mid-fights. And this is where Anthony Joshua can take notes from Tyson Fury's book. Because Tyson Fury is always making adjustments. You know, if you look at the first Deontay Wilder fight and the second Deontay Wilder fight, two completely different fighters. You know, the same person, Tyson Fury, but two completely different approaches. Whereas Anthony Joshua, in the first Usyk fight and the second Usyk fight, he just sat off Usyk. He gave Usyk way too much time and way too much space to just, you know, pick Joshua apart, change levels, find angles and do all that stuff. So Joshua is a lot more unsure of himself in comparison to Deontay Wilder. And now Deontay Wilder, he is extremely one dimensional. He is always going to look for the knockout shot no matter what. He's improved in terms of his ability to set up the knockout shot. You know, we seen in the third Tyson Fury fights, he tried to make adjustments. He was going to the body. He did it for about two, three rounds, but he completely abandoned the plan and then just went to slugging it out with Tyson Fury. Now, it's really hard to assess how the knockout losses affect Deontay Wilder because he fought Hellenius, but it went one round. So we still don't really know how good Deontay Wilder's punch resistance is. Deontay Wilder might be shot to bits in terms of his punch resistance. You know, if he gets hit clean on the chin, he might go down very easy from a decent shot because he's been knocked out twice badly by Fury. But we don't really know. In the case of Joshua, I do believe he's had a slight decline in his punch resistance. I don't think Joshua had a granite chin prior to um, the Ruiz fight, even the first fight. I don't necessarily think he had a great chin. But he had a decent chin, but I feel like it's regressed slightly. And Joshua almost looks like a rabbit in the headlights when things don't go his way. He almost looks like a victim in the ring, and I've mentioned this before. He really needs to work on that. Stop playing the victim, and he needs to up the ante and just get gritty and get his job done. Similar to someone like a Tyson Fury. Because that's what great fighters do. Great fighters are able to make adjustment, and if Joshua wants to be a great fighter, he needs to understand the right adjustment, when to make the adjustment, and what exactly he needs to do. He doesn't need his trainer guiding him step by step throughout the fight. He needs to understand that he needs to take the initiative himself and do certain things to get a positive result. That being said, if they were to fight in 2022, 
sorry, 2023, I would favour Deontay Wilder. Just because Deontay Wilder seems to be a lot more sure of himself in comparison to Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder is going to essentially bring the heat to AJ. That's what I believe. Now, Joshua could win that fight in 2023 because if Deontay Wilder's chin is completely shot to bits, if his chin is essentially done and he has no punch resistance because of the two knockout losses against Tyson Fury, then it's a much more 50-50 fight. You could even favor it to Joshua in terms of the odds because, listen, Fury really did have a sustained beating on Wilder in the third fight. And that takes a lot from you in terms of your career, in terms of your durability, your punch resistance. And Joshua is a much more ferocious puncher and especially on the inside. Joshua is very, very good on the inside. If Joshua has a chance of beating Deontay Wilder, he would have to fight mid to close range. Because as we've seen from the second Tyson Fury fight, Deontay Wilder doesn't really have an inside game. He likes coming in like a slingshot. Deontay Wilder likes exploding from the outside and then he likes to come in with the right hand because he's extremely fast and he's very explosive and he's a massive puncher. So Wilder doesn't really have the coordination, the balance and the punch variation to have success against Anthony Joshua on the inside. He's a lot more unconventional. He swings a lot of shots. He throws a lot of looping shots. He's not very accurate. Whereas Joshua on the inside is a lot more clean, a lot more crisp. He's even faster on the inside than Deontay Wilder. Wilder's fast closing the distance, whereas Joshua is fast landing combos on the inside. But in order to do that, Joshua, he needs to make the first move. He needs to move his head off the center line and close the distance between him and Wilder. Whereas Wilder can just jab and keep Joshua on the back foot and then come in with the right hand essentially whenever he wants to. So yeah, even though I would slightly favor Deontay Wilder if they were to fight in 2023, Joshua still does have a good chance. Now, personally for their careers, it's probably a good time for Wilder to fight Joshua because Joshua has lost three in his last five fights. You know, some say Joshua is mentally gone, he's defeated. And let's just assume for argument's sake, Deontay Wilder's chin is, you know, somewhat decent. It held up well in sparring. It obviously didn't really get tested in the Robert Hellenius fight, but let's just say for argument's sake, his chin is good. He potentially has the tools to take Joshua out mid to early rounds. For Anthony Joshua, if I was managing Anthony Joshua, I actually wouldn't put him in with Deontay Wilder. I would try to build up AJ's confidence and make AJ become as ferocious as he once was. I would put AJ in there, I don't know, with a lower level opposition. Someone like Gerald Washington, who Hatman Strikes Back actually mentioned, which is a good shout to build up his confidence. Then I'd put him in there with someone who is dangerous, but someone who is very beatable. Someone like a Dylan White. Dylan White, his punch resistance is absolutely shot. He's gone in terms of his punch resistance. He only has a left hook, but it's very, very telegraphed. Dylan White is a plotter, so he doesn't have the best footwork. And AJ's obviously got the height and reach advantage against Dylan White. And then I'd probably step AJ up further and put him in there with someone like a Zhilai Zhang or a Filip Hergovic. And then I would put him in there with a Deontay Wilder. That's what I would personally do if I was Anthony Joshua. I would build up his confidence, give him some rehabilitation fights, let me go over it again, Gerald Washington, then Dylan White, then Zhilai Zhang, the guy who lost to Filip Hergovic, then I would put him in with Deontay Wilder. Because you would hope by that time, at least from Joshua's perspective, maybe Wilder had aged, maybe he showed poor punch resistance from the losses to Tyson Fury, and hopefully Joshua's confidence would be up by that point, you know, by having three fights you know, before a Deontay Wilder fight. So, yeah, AJ's team should move him slowly. They shouldn't rush. I know Joshua's a cash cow for Dazone and Eddie Hearn, but it's about making the right decisions for his career. You know, Eddie Hearn putting him in there with Andy Ruiz Jr., it was a mistake. Joshua, in terms of his career, he has been rushed. What, what did he fight Dylan White? His 15th fight, a big domestic fight, filled out stadium against Dillian White in his 15th fight. So Joshua has consistently fought high-level opposition, so credit where credit's due to Anthony 
Joshua. All right, guys, those were just my quick thoughts on a potential matchup between AJ Anthony Joshua and Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder uh, in 2023. Who do you guys favor in the comment section? Tell me down below. Um, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. I'm nearly at 400 subscribers, guys, so if you could help me get there, it would be much appreciated. I'll keep trying to pump out these videos, stay consistent, and deliver you guys good content. Alright, peace.